Hey everybody, Tori here. So this is an unscheduled live video. Um, so if you didn't know it was gonna happen, nobody did, <laughs> even I didn't. I'm just gonna wait a second to see if anybody pops on. Um, and I'm also gonna just set up my computer here so that I can see your lovely comments if anybody does pop on and leaves a comment. Um, what I'm doing today, and I thought I would bring you along for the trip, is I would share a live video um, of me trying out the Distress Oxide inks just to see if they work. Um, I'm not sure if the connection is really good, so I hope it's not too bad um, and that this was going to work. But I really wanted to try out the Distress Oxides that I had ordered. And I thought it would be kind of fun to do it with you guys live. So if any of you have any ideas or suggestions or things you want me to try, um, you could kind of chime in with your thoughts. So um, I'm not sure if anybody's hopped on yet, but if you do hop on, leave a comment um, in the chat box because it's definitely more interesting to chat with somebody else than it is to just chat by myself because let's be honest, it's really difficult to just chat to yourself um, for a while while you're doing a video. It's more interesting to chat with somebody else. It says that I have a really bad connection, so hopefully that will get better. Um, I'm not really sure what to do to make it better, but we're just gonna go with it. So if you guys have any thoughts or comments, leave them in the chat box. If you have tried Distress Oxide inks, let me know by leaving me a comment. Tell me what your favorite techniques are. If you haven't tried them, then you're in for a roller coaster. <laughs> I guess we both are. So I literally just got these in the mail, like last week. I took them all out of their packages, but they're brand new. I have not used them at all. This is the first time. So who knows if this is really gonna work or not, I guess we'll find out. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna play with them and show you guys some different techniques that I've learned on line, online on YouTube. And if you have Distress Oxide inks and you wanna play along, then definitely I recommend pulling them out and playing along with me. If you don't have Distress Oxide inks, you could do this with Distress inks or you could just watch and give me comments and chat with me because honestly it's so much more fun when we chat. So I know there's a couple of you guys watching which is awesome. Hi Shorty, hi Valerie, I'm so glad you guys are here. Do you guys have Distress Oxide inks? Have you played with them before? What's your favorite technique? Leave me a comment, I'd love to know. So before we really dive in, I'm gonna let you know the tools that I'm using so that way if you do wanna play along, you'll know what to pull out of your stash. Hi Carrie, I'm so glad you're here. So I have my Distress Oxide inks and this is the entire set of the first collection. Now I know that they just um, are launching a new collection of 12 and I don't have those. I only have the first 12, but I'm sure if I really like them, I'll go get the other ones. I wish they were mini, but they're not. So I'm gonna stick with the big size. So I'm just gonna tell you guys the colors um, as we get started here, just in case you do have both sets of them and you wanna know which ones I'm using. So up first I have Wilted Violet, this really pretty purple. I have Faded Jeans this really fun blue, ice spruce, broken china, cracked pistachio, peeled paint, fossilized amber, amber, fired brick, walnut stain, worn lipstick, which worn lipstick is one of my favorite of the distress colors, so I'm excited about that one. Um, spiced marmalade and vintage photo and I actually have a class coming up at a local scrapbook store that I'm really excited about and I think for that class I'm gonna be playing with distress oxide inks and I think I'm gonna go with those four so those are the ones that I'm really interested in trying out because um, I just love them hi Anita Shorty says she doesn't have an ink, but she's thinking of getting some. Well, let me tell you, Shorty, 
Distressings are my favorite. There's just so many fun techniques that you can play with them. And I always use the regular ones, but I wanted to try out the Distress ones, so I guess today we'll kind of see how those work. And I also have some other supplies. I have just some random shipping tags. And I just wanted to let you know, because I have done Distress videos before, these are the shipping tags I use. I purchased them at Staples. They're shipping tags, recycled, size 5. And they come in like a hundred pack and they're a really good price. I think, I can't remember, but it's probably like four or five dollars for all hundred of these. So it works really well. Hi, Glenda. Glad you're here. I'm going to use these mini ink blending tools. I love these round ones. And I have some of the ink pads here and everything. So I'm going to play with those and see how that works. I have a random sponge for no reason other than I just thought maybe I'll use a sponge. I have this really cool Tim Holtz, um, what do you call this? Mm, it has an official name, which I can't think of, so maybe somebody can tell me. But it's like a tool that helps you do really cool mist. Like you can like spritz water or ink. Oh, a splatter brush. Thanks, Carrie. So glad you're here. <laughs> and you can like use paint with it. You can use water. We're going to play with that. I have a jar with some paint brushes. I have this giant paint brush just for fun because I love this giant paint brush. Look how big it is. It's just awesome. And I have a misting bottle, which this is really funny. I didn't have a misting bottle, so I just took an empty downy wrinkle release bottle, filled it with water, and this is my misting tool. <laughs> so. Are you guys ready to get playing? I would love to know if any of you have actually played with the Distress inks before um, so that I could just kind of know what's going on. So I think maybe the best way to start would just be to kind of like look at what the colors look like. So first up, Wilted Violet. I'm just going to swipe it on top of the tag a couple times. Ooh, that's a really pretty color. So that's Wilted Violet. Look at this really pretty purple tone. I love that. Well, I'm excited about that color. Cracked Pistachio, which I do have Cracked Pistachio um, Distress Ink, and I think it's such a pretty color. It's such a pretty mint. This one. Ooh, look at that color. It's a little, um, like it's still kind of wet, so it probably takes a little longer to dry. Which kind of makes sense. So, Distress Oxide, if I'm correct, which I think I am, Distress Oxide inks are a combination of a pigment and a dye ink, and pigment inks typically take a little longer to dry. Like, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's still kind of wet. So, um, just, just keep that in mind. But it's a really cool formulation because it's like both a pigment ink which gives you that bright vibrant color and also a um, what's the other one I can't think of the word right now when you're on live video it's very difficult they're very vibrant colors like I actually really love these Valerie says she doesn't have any inks any of these inks yeah the truth is like until I like saw how cool they were I was like I don't know if I really want to invest the money but um I love the regular distress ink so I thought it would be kind of fun to play with the oxides and all of the videos that I've seen on YouTube they look so cool like just the things that you can do with them so this is faded jean it's like a really it it looks like jeans actually it looks like faded jeans good name Tim these are designed by Tim Holtz, by the way, if you didn't know that. So if I say, good job, Tim, it's because I'm talking to him. I love Tim. I would love to meet him one day. He's such a genius. I know, Carrie says Tim Holtz always makes the cola stuff, and I absolutely agree. Okay, so this is peeled paint. Um, so it's this really nice green color. I'm just loving how vibrant these colors are. Actually... I feel like the Distress Oxide colors are more vibrant than the um, the regular Distress inks. Like they just, like that's just such a beautiful color. 
And um, apparently you can stamp like a stamp with these. You don't have to just uh, use them for like mixed media. You can use them for stamping and you'll get such a pretty color. So that's fossilized ember. These look so pretty, guys. I'm actually really impressed. Um, Glenda says she's on the fence about these. Um, she has the regular ones. I, don't, I was on the fence too, Glenda, but then I started watching all these YouTube videos and I was like, I don't know, these look pretty awesome. So I, I figured I had a little extra money, so I was like, I'm just going to go for it. Walnut stain. And Carrie said, Glenda, once you start, you will love all the colors or you'll want all the colors. Yeah. I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid that once I play with these 12, I'm going to want the next 12. Um, and Valerie says that she likes playing with the regular distressings, which I do too, and she imagines these would be fun too. Yeah, that's how I was kind of feeling too. So this is Ice Spruce. Not necessarily my favorite color, but sometimes it's nice to have some of those like more neutral tones. Like, honestly, I'm going to be honest, like these colors here, this faded jeans, this yellow, and this fired brick are my favorite colors. The more greens and neutrals are not necessarily my favorite, but I feel like it's nice to have them in your stash. And like, I am not an orange fan, but this Spice Marmalade, like look at that color. It's just so vibrant. And Vintage Photo is the last one here, so it's like a brownie tone. Ooh. Again, not a brown fan, but like... Seriously, that looks really nice. It's like a really vibrant, chalky color almost. So, um, Glenda is wondering what the difference between regular and oxide inks are. So that's a great question. So I'm gonna show you some of the properties of the oxide ones, but basically the nice thing about the oxide ones is they are a combination of pigment and dye ink. So it creates a really cool property. You can stamp with these um, and you'll get really nice crisp images. The distressings, like the regular ones, aren't really great for stamping. I mean, you can use them for stamping, but they're not super great for that. Um, and they have definitely different properties. So when you um, add water to the regular inks, and maybe I should grab some of them, but when you add water to the regular inks, um, it just kind of like the the ink kind of like disperses and creates really cool effects. When you add water to these ones, they oxidize. So, and Carrie's kind of typed in some of the differences too, so I'm gonna just read off Carrie's answers because she has some really good ones. Um, Carrie says, the, ox the oxide you can stamp images with, the distress regular are not as good for that, so that's what I said. The oxides are more opaque, definitely. They create like a more crisp, um, opaque color because of the pigment. Um, and Carrie says she thinks you can heat emboss with the oxide, but she hasn't tried it. I haven't tried that either, but maybe I can go grab my um, heat emboss stuff later and we can try it. But I imagine you probably could heat emboss with this just because seeing how they're still, like how they stay wet a little longer means that they probably would work with um, heat embossing. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just go grab quickly a couple of the regular ones just so that I can swipe them on a tag and I'll show you guys what it looks like. So just give me a one second. So I have some of the regular distress inks here. So those are the oxides. And then here I have some of the regular one. And I'm just gonna show you one. See if I have any, yeah. So I have faded jeans, which is the same color as this one. So this is the regular ink. And then that is the oxide. So just take a look at the difference between these two. This one creates like a really opaque, um, a chalky kind of finish and then that one's more of a dye ink so that kind of shows you the difference between the two um, faded jeans and what I'll do is I'll add water to both of them so you can kind of check out what the difference would be too. I'm just gonna see if I have any other ones so I have cracked pistachio too which is the same as this one 
I'm gonna just spread that on this tag. And you can see kind of the difference between those two. I definitely see a difference. So this is more of a chalky, really clean finish, like really nice pigment. And then this one is definitely like a lot lighter. It's not as pigmented. So that kind of gives you um, a little feel for the differences in colors. Um, and CHSM23 has just joined us. Hey, Angela. Um, and she says she loves the Distress Oxides. Um, she loves Distress Anything. That's awesome, Angela. You know, we're just playing with them, so if you have any tips for us, please tell us, because I would love to know. So here's, those are the differences between the Oxide and the regular. Um, I don't know if I have any other of the colors here. I have peeled paint, which is that one. I'll show you guys that. Peeled paint, just so that, I think it's kind of nice to be able to see the comparisons. I don't know if you guys like that or not, but tell me if you do, if you like seeing the comparisons between the colors, because I can go grab more and show you. So here's peeled paint oxide, and here's peeled paint um, regular distress ink, and it's, it's basically the same tone, but that is definitely more chalky. Um, a really nice finish because of the, the pigment that's in there. This is more dye, it's a little darker. Um, it doesn't go on as nicely. So that kind of gives you a little comparison too. Now, I wanna add some water because I feel like water is kind of the best way for us to see what the inks do. So I'm gonna start with these two here. So this is Faded Jeans. And I have the Distress Oxide on this side, and then I have the regular Distress Ink on this side. I'll just stick that there. Oh, this is another thing um, I just wanted to mention because this is important to know just in case you care. The regular Distress Inks come in this large size and the mini size, and I love the mini size. Like, I just love it. I think it's so nice and convenient. It fits in this cute little tin. They're easy to store. They don't take up a lot of space. But apparently the Distress Ox does not come in mini and they're not planning on making them in mini. They're planning on only doing them in this big size. And according to Ranger and Tim and what I've seen online is because of the properties of the dye and um, pigment ink mixed together in the oxides, they're not planning on putting them in minis. So. That, that's just one key thing to keep in mind too. So Angela says she uses them for everything. It's super simple to keep them from running by using a medium and then embossing or stamping on top of them too. That's a great idea. Okay, so let's add some water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna just quickly spritz both of these. I'm gonna just spritz the Distress one, or the Faded Jeans one, and I'm gonna spritz the regular Distress ink. And just so that you can kind of see, I'm gonna just do it on camera, and I'm just gonna spritz them both twice. And you can, you can all, I can already see it. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this one kind of created like a really cool, like it's starting to oxidize. Um, really cool impact. And then this one, the dye ink starts to run and get almost, um, I don't know, like it creates cool effects, they both do, but this one keeps its pigment color um, where this one starts to run. And if I just grab my paper towel and just kind of dab at this, you, you're definitely gonna see the difference when I do that because check this out. So here is the oxide and here is the regular um, distress ink. So it started to oxidize here, meaning it kind of comes up with this like really cool um, impact. It's, it's, I don't know how to explain it, but it, it comes up with this really cool impact. This one almost loses some of its pigment when you start to spray it. Um, they both create really unique effects. Um, so I feel like either one is really fun to play with, but that kind of gives you an idea of what happens when you spritz them. So let's try, um, let's see what it looks like when you spritz 
I'm just gonna put this aside for a second. Let's see what happens when you spritz um, peeled paint. I have the Distress Oxide on this side, I have the regular one on this side, and um, I'm just gonna spritz it a couple times, and like, look at that, it kind of like creates this really cool like oxidized impact, and then this one, the dye ink just starts to run and create kind, kind of fun effects too, but they both do different things. So I'm just gonna pat it dry for a second just so you can see, I'm like that is so cool. It kind of reminds me of um, rust a little bit, like the oxide does. Like when the ink oxidizes, it still holds its really fun pigment, but it creates almost like this rusted look a little bit. I don't know if that makes sense. And then here you have the regular one, so the ink just starts to move and um, run a little bit, which also creates a really fun effect, but it definitely is different when you spritz them. Okay, we'll try one more color comparison, because I have this one, which is peeled, or cracked pistachio, not peeled pistachio, cracked pistachio. And what I'm going to do with this one is I kind of want to show you, I kind of want to still be able to see what the pigment looks like. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to grab my big paint brush and do a couple of splatters on here instead of spritzing the whole thing. And I feel like that's going to give you a really cool look. So already I can see where I've added the water to this oxide one, Distress Oxide. It's oxidized where the water is, but the other place is still that really chalky, pigmenty impact. And then this one creates almost, it almost removes the ink in the spots where I've added those little spritzes. So there you go, drying it off. You can definitely see the difference between those two. It's so cool and super unique. So that's really fun. I'm really excited about what these do. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through each of these. I've already done three of them, but I'm going to spritz all of them and just kind of show you what happens to each color when you add water and when you kind of do the oxide impact. So here I've got Wilted Violet. And you can start to see where I've added the water. It's oxidizing. And if you just take some paper towel and just remove the water or the extra water, you can see the places where it's oxi oxidized because of the water and the places where it didn't. I'll do Broken China next. So that one I got a lot of water on. Just let it sit there for a second and worn lipstick. And then I'll just some of it off. So do you guys have any questions? Um, anything that you want to know about these just while I'm doing that? Because be happy to kind of answer your questions. This, this uh, worn lipstick is just so pretty. Oh, I love that one. So faded brick. There we go. Fossilized ember. Just a couple of drops. Now, if you were to spray, if you were to spray these, and then use your um, heat tool to dry them, you'd get a totally different effect. For some reason, I can't find my heat tool. I don't. I honestly don't know what I did with it. Now, this is super cool. This is walnut stain, and I feel like this is the perfect example of what's happening with the oxide. Like you can definitely see it starting to separate. I feel like when you spritz it with water, the dye and the pigment start to separate and create this really cool oxidized effect. And if I just pat that dry a little bit, you can definitely see where the water has oxidized on there. That is just so cool. Super cool. Okay, I spruce next. 
here's ice spruce um, vintage photo now obviously like my suggestion would be if you are just starting with distress inks like don't spend all your money to get all of them all at one time my suggestion would be to get like three or four colors that you think will go together and maybe look at which colors I have here and that you like and then maybe start with like a few of them and then play with them and then see if you like them and if you do then expand from there so like if I was just gonna start I would probably get like um, cracked pistachio, wilted violet, worn lipstick, and broken china just because I love those four colors and I would just play with those and then I would keep going. But if you are more of like a neutral tone, maybe you want to start with like some of these ones. Okay, so that kind of shows you what each of them look like when you just swipe them on the tag and spray them with a little water. So there's a couple other things I want to try now that we've done that so this is one thing that um i'm just gonna move these aside i will definitely use these still i'm gonna turn them all into something but here's something that um tim does all the time he uses a craft mat which i have here and he just kind of swipes the um ink pad right onto the mat so i'm gonna take a little worn lipstick a little broken china and just kind of create a little pool of ink on my mat here. I'm gonna use some cracked pistachio, do the same thing. And why don't we just add my other favorite here, wilted violet. Okay, there you go. I've got four colors of distress inks here. I'm going to spritz them with a little water right on my craft mat. Not too much but just a little water and then I'm gonna just take my tag and I'm actually gonna just run it through the inks just like that and like look at how gorgeous that is oh my gosh guys it's so beautiful now um, it's just so pretty so I'm just gonna do that again and the nice thing about the distress oxides is they lay on top of each other so you don't have to worry too much about the ink mixing together and creating a big huge mess if I was using the regular inks and I did this and I used a whole bunch of random colors like this it probably would look like a big huge mess but it just kind of creates this really fun effect and if you have your heat gun you can dry them and then go back in but again I can't find my heat gun I honestly don't know what I did with it so I'm just going to kind of dab this off a little bit with my paper towel and then I can actually go back in to the ink and it'll actually just sit right on top. It doesn't um, make it muddy. It just kind of sits on top of what you've already done, which is so fun. And I'm going to show you, um, for those of you who aren't really familiar with the Distress Oxides and um, just regular Distress Inks, I'm going to show you what would happen if I did that same technique with regular Distress Inks. So look at how pretty that looks. Like this tag is just so gorgeous. So I'm going to let those dry for a second. Just lay those there. And I'm going to do the same technique with regular distress inks and I'm gonna use four colors just like I just used and I'm gonna show you guys the difference now there's definitely a time and a place for distress inks regular ones um, but you just gotta know so I'm gonna go grab my other colors no I kind of want to use the exact same ones I think I have the same exact colors I'm gonna see okay let's see so I used cracked pistachio so on my craft mat I'm just gonna smush the ink pad on there to get some color I used broken china um, I don't have broken china but I have mermaid lagoon which is kind of close so I'll use mermaid lagoon I used Worn lipstick, 
which I don't have for some reason. I think I do have it, but I might have lent it to somebody. So I'm gonna use picked raspberry instead. And um, wilted violet, which I don't have. Don't have anything. But So I'm gonna use seedless preserve. But I've used a green, a blue, a red, and a purple. So look at what happened when I did the same technique with the oxides. So those are the oxides. Here I've got the regular distress inks. I'm gonna spritz them with some water. And I'm gonna take three tags and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna run it through. And it's definitely more vibrant. Creates a more vibrant look. So I did that once on each of the tags and it looks really pretty. So what I would normally do is, uh, there's like a hair on here. What I would normally do if I was using my regular distress inks is I would stop there. I wouldn't really do a lot more just because it can kind of get a little cray cray, <laughs> but I'll show you guys what happens. So on those ones, I let them dry a little bit. Then I went in with a paper towel just to pat them dry. Bum bum. And then I went back into the ink. And this is where you'll see the difference. When I went back into the ink with those ones, it layered on top. But if I go back in with the regular distress inks, what you're gonna see is it actually doesn't layer on top. It actually reactivates the ink that's on there and mixes with it. So it kind of can start to get a little um, muddy sometimes. So just so you know but I'll just give you another example. So here I've got the regular distress inks, which are super pretty too. So don't, like, I still love my regular distress inks, but definitely you can see the differences. The oxides create this really pretty chalky effect almost. Um, the regular distress inks create a really vibrant tone. So there's, I feel like there's a time and a place for both of them. But this is where you'll start to see the fun part of oxides. If I take these oxides and I go, okay, I really like these, but I want to add more to them, and I decide to pull out fossilized ember, and I spritz this, and I put them back into this, it's literally going to lay on top of what I already have there it's not going to reactivate and create like a muddy mess. It literally just lays right on top, which is so pretty. And you can actually go back in with some water. If you had your heat tool, you could dry part way and add a little more water. But like, look at how gorgeous that looks when it lays like right on top. Like that is just so pretty, guys. Ugh. I can't even tell you how much I love this. It's like this really pretty effect. Okay, I'm gonna do the exact same thing with my other tags, which I used for distress inks, like regular distress inks. And I'm gonna go in with fossilized amber, so the exact same color, but a distress ink, so not a oxide. And I'm gonna spritz this. And what you'll notice is it doesn't lay on top, it actually remixes and activates with this. So look at that. So it still looks really cool, but it creates like a whole other look. And um, the thing with, you'll find with the regular distress inks is the more colors that you add, the more it'll start to look a little muddy. So I'll give you an example. On this one, it's starting to look a little muddy, all of the colors together, mixing together, where this one doesn't look muddy, it just lays on top and it creates this like really cool impact. Now it still looks really cool, like don't get me wrong, I still love them, but it definitely is a different effect depending on what you're going with, right? So. That just gives you kind of an idea of how the different inks work if you were trying to debate which one you like better. Does anybody have any questions about this before I move on? I would be happy to hear your questions. So I'm just gonna move my distress inks to the side. 
This video is supposed to be about oxides, but for some reason I'm playing with my regular distress inks because, you know, that happens. Honestly, these are just so gorgeous to me. I love, 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 love the pastel opaque tone to these. I'm going to actually like go in with some more ink on these ones just for fun. And like it's such a pretty color. Oh my gosh, I just love it. It's like, it honestly looks kind of like a um, snow cone. Or like, um, what do you call it? What's the word? <laughs> um, cotton candy. That's just how fun it looks to me. Yep, 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 yep. I'm just playing with those tags that I had already used up. So. Okay. Guys, these are so, like, these tones are just so, so beautiful. I just love the way that the Distress Oxides like play together. It's so fun. Okay, why don't we try a couple other techniques just because I've got you here and I've got my tools out. So I have my mini ink blending tools and I kind of want to see how they um, blend on here just for fun. So I'm going to use Fossilized Ember and just kind of stick my ink dabber there and just kind of work it on the tag. It goes on so smoothly. This, yeah, smoothly is a word. It's so nice. And the nice thing about it is I can literally see while I'm doing it that it's like evening out and creating a really like, like clean, smooth blend. Where sometimes when you use the regular distress inks, they don't like, you have to be so careful about the way that you blend them on there that they can sometimes end up like creating like a hard line, which is okay if that's the look you're going for. But this creates such a beautiful like blend on here. Oh, I love it. I want to actually see what it would look like if I took another color and blended it in there too. Yeah, Glenda says that the oxides look more pastel. Very pretty. Yeah, I agree. They're very like a pastel-y kind of tone. And like look at this pink as I blend it in with the yellow. It just like is blending so, so nicely. Oh, it's like butter. Butter. Let's add some broken china. Look at this blue. So the blending abilities are actually like pretty epic, I think. I mean, regular regular distressings blend too, but I find them harder to blend with. Like I find that they don't want to blend as nicely as this does. Ooh, pretty pretty. Okay. So there we go. Look at how gorgeous that looks blended. Should we add some water? I think so. I'm going to take my giant paintbrush and just kind of tap some water spritzes on top of this. Oh my goodness. I can already see it starting to oxidize those blends. Can you guys see this? This is so pretty. Okay, so if you have a heat gun, you can start to heat this up and dry it, which would be so pretty. Again, I don't know where my heat gun is. So I'm just gonna kind of use a little paper towel and just kind of dab up some of the water there. And check that out. Check out that cool, pretty impact. Like I have this ink on my um, mat here and I'm a big believer of not wasting anything so after drying that down what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go back into it with that pigment 
You can even take one of the tags you've already done and go back into and just dry that off. Super pretty. Oh, the blending is just so pretty. Like that just looks so nice to me. And I like how you can create those different looks. Like this is when I've blended it. That's when I've swiped it. That's when I kind of had it wet on wet, you know? So it kind of creates that really fun differences that you can come up with like just with this easy technique. Okay. Another thing you can do is if you have swiped your ink pad right onto your um, tag just like this, you can actually just grab a wet paintbrush and just literally like paint with it and basically like oxidize it yourself with your paintbrush, which is kind of fun too that you can do even that. And can create like a cool ombre effect with that. Just kind of spread the ink down. Fun, fun, fun. So you can just see what that looks like. I'll do it again on this one. So you can kind of just take the ink and spread it around. You can even add it to your mat and go into it here and then add it if you like a little more control I know there's some control freaks in all of us not that it's a bad thing you just want to add a little bit of water to kind of get it going And when it dries is when you're gonna kind of start to see the really cool impact of what you've done. Super fun. So I think I'm like really having fun with these oxides. I'm glad that I purchased them and I'm excited to kind of like play with them some more and see what else I can do. Um, obviously I feel like I haven't even like touch the surface of what I can do with them but I think one of the fun things about this is that you get to keep playing and trying out different things so that's one of the really fun parts about it right is as you play you'll get to see different effects and see what you like and do you like it when you blend it on the tag do you like it when you swipe it on the tag or when you watercolor with it do you like it when you put it on your mat and run your tags through it do you like it when you um when you like play with it um on your mat or when you do it like on your what do you call it like right on your tag like I feel like the options are really endless with that which is super fun just like a really fun um, element of these oxide inks so does anybody have any last questions I feel like I've kind of played with them a bunch on the video and I'm gonna probably play some more with them on my own and then I might come back and do like a technique video with you guys where I show you some of the techniques I figured out um, this one was kind of just an experimentation video and then I'll come back and do like an actual technique-y video where I show you some different techniques and how I would use them and maybe play with some of my other mediums because I'm sure these would be really fun to play with if you were using like your, um, what do you call them? <laughs> your like multi-matte mediums and your um texture pastes and your stamps and stuff like that that would be really fun too it's just such a beautiful color like I love how it creates this like really opaque chalky look I'm really happy with it guys I feel like I feel like it's really fun and it's kind of a game changer and I actually might maybe like them better than my regular distressings, which is saying a lot because I like my regular distressings. 
but I love the pastel-y tones of them is what I think I really enjoy about them. Anybody have any last comments or questions or thoughts or things that they want to see? Um, I would be happy to show it to you. Oh, Glenda just reminded me, she said, to those of us in the U.S., happy 4th of July. And I just want to reiterate that. I come, honestly, I'm sorry, but I completely forgot that it's the 4th of July. You know, here I am Canadian. Um, so for those of you guys in the U.S., I want to wish you a very happy 4th of July. Um, I hope that you guys have a wonderful day. Maybe you can enjoy some fireworks, a barbecue, or something like that. And for those of you in Canada, happy belated Canada Day. And for those of you in another country, not the U.S. or not Canada, well, I just want to wish you a very happy day. <laughs> just day. Because sometimes I think, like, we want it to be some special day, but, like, sometimes it can be fun to just be a regular old day and, like, you know, just enjoy your Tuesday evening. <laughs> So I hope you guys had fun checking out and experimenting with the Distress Oxides with me and that I answered some of your questions. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments of this video. And if you really enjoyed um, checking out this video, if you enjoyed playing along with me, maybe you can like this video, comment and subscribe so that I know that you like doing them. And if you'd like to see more live videos from me, make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell um, next to the subscribe button. If you hit that little bell, you'll be notified when I post a new video or when I do a live video and you won't miss any of them. So again, thank you guys so much for joining me and I hope you have a good evening. Bye guys.